Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I'm really really happy today to make this video because uh, it's something that I was working on for a while now. Uh, I had remixed uh, the uh, holder for Instax Wide that can replace the FB100. How many of you have uh, around your house one of these really beautiful land camera? And how many of you was uh, so sad when uh, Fuji announced, unfortunately, that uh, their FB100 were going to be discontinued? I remember it was... Uh, I was a little bit uh, in a hurry to find out as much package as possible. To store in my fridge and uh, I still remember the feeling when you can peel apart your uh, your film and uh, the, the beauty of the picture that is coming out but uh, nowadays uh, the cost of the remaining one that you can find online is uh, is really expensive definitely and uh, even the new uh, pack that are coming out from a Kickstarter campaign are still not affordable. So uh, I felt like, okay, it means these type of cameras are going to be just part of the shelf to show that uh, the beauty of the camera themselves. But then I said, wow, there is this uh, beautiful Instax wide film that uh, is available. It has the same size of the FP100 or really really similar. So I always said uh, how can we utilize that film inside these cameras? And I came up with uh, uh, a design of this uh, uh, film holder and I decided to remake it in order to allow all the Instax type lovers to being able to use these cameras, but also bigger one, because uh, there are tons of Polaroid packs that uh, are allowing you to insert inside this FP100 size uh, cartridge. And they can be used for a 4x5 uh, camera, they can be used on a Zenza Bronica, an Hasselblad, the Mamiya, and whatever you like. But uh, I also felt like, wow, we have uh, such a variety of uh, cameras that we can use, and uh, we also have a, a variety of uh, Instax lovers. There are people that love the Instax Mini, people that love the Instax Square, and people that love the Instax Wide. So why do we have to limit to just one type? So the solution that I'm going to offer you here, and uh, it's free to everyone to download and print by yourself, just follow the link in the description below, is an adapter. Let me show you. What I have found initially was uh, this small adapter that probably you remember I had mentioned during the video of review of the Labist 84. And thanks to this uh, really great printer, and again, I'm more than happy to suggest everyone uh, this 3D printer because it's cheap, the quality of the outcome is really great, and uh, well, you can uh, enjoy the Instax wide inside the FP100 cartridge. So, uh, usually this set comes with three different types. The base of the cartridge, the cover of the cartridge, and the dark slide. In this case, uh, I'm still working on uh, an improvement of the dark slide because uh, even if uh, you are going to print with 100% infill and really fine uh, quality, 
you still can't see through. So what I have done so far is just put this electric tape. What I can suggest you to do is uh, or do the same or simply uh, paint it in black. These three elements together allow you to have your Instax film here and easily carry it with you. You need to just add to this set a normal rubber band so that you are not worried to utilize this one even in daylight, like now. It's not extremely recommended, but uh, always try to keep it in a subdued light. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a good, good thing, right? What I have decided to do to improve this one is also adding two new formats, the mini and the square, so that you are now capable to print your favorite Instax format on any of the cameras that are using the FP100 back, or the 4x5, as we can see later. This is the first test that I have done. I will show you better later as well, and I took with that Polaroid 320. There is a difference in the ISO, of course, so you have to come up with a solution, and the solution is to just put the uh, ND filters on the light sensor. In this case I put uh, ND4 and I set up my camera speed as 3000. This of course is 3075, but uh, we don't have the Instax uh, with the ISO, ISO 100, so that's the only solution that we can do. What I'm going to do now is to uh, have a live test. Uh, for you. First of all, let me show you uh, how you can put the film from your cartridge to the new 3D printed cartridge. So one more time, everything here has to be done in uh, complete darkness. That means uh, you need, for example, to use a changing bag to do that. Remember to remove your smartwatch because uh, it will brighten the night. So uh, you need to avoid that. And uh, for uh, explanatory purpose only, I'm now going to do it with a camera. Um, all the films here are already used films, so there is no problem when they are exposed to the light. We have uh, the same uh, process for all the three format, the wide, the mini and the square. The cover itself is exactly the same for all of the three. And same I can say for the slide. And uh, when I print this one, I print uh, as a raft, so that uh, the raft surface that is around I can use uh, to make another uh, slide. Let's start with the Instax white. In addition to make it uh, in complete darkness, it's highly recommended to use uh, gloves in order to don't make the uh, negative uh, dirty. Uh, again, this is just an example, so I'm going to use it uh, in this way. What you have to do and recommend from my point of view is first of all remove uh, the plastic lid from the top. That will help when you have to eject and then put back the film. And uh, pushing from the back, you have then to lift up the film. And as soon as uh, the uh, pouch for the chemical, that is the first one that is coming out, is outside, instead of keep touching the film itself, uh, I recommend you to take it from the side and 
slide it out. Now remember that uh, despite the fact this is the surface where we are going to see the image, what is going to be impressed by the light is this one, the dark part. That means this has to be on the outside of our holder. So what we do, we are going to put this way the film, that means uh, the surface that would be impressed by the light is on the back, and then simply cover with the cover itself. Don't push because the chemical that is here then can spread inside the picture and ruin it. Next step that you have to do is to insert the slide and you can help yourself simply lifting up a little bit, put in your slide and that's done. Your film now is safe to be used outside. So what we have to do as a last step in order to be sure that this one is not going to move when we are uh, moving from our bag or uh, wherever we want to keep it is to just put a rubber band around. Now let's repeat uh, our operations with the Instax Mini. We have our Instax Mini here. We remove or lift up the plastic and then we slide out the film. We take it and this is the surface, remember, that is going to be impressed by the light. So you have to turn it out and put here. Now, with the uh, wide, you can easily put, without being too much worried about uh, is it centered or not. In this case, uh, for the uh, mini and the square, what you have to do is to pay attention of the border here. So what I recommend you to do is, because it's completely dark and you, you don't see anything, just try to put it on one hedge and then simply slide it till you feel the film coming up and little by little understand that this is the center that you need to put your film. Put back the back itself and remember to put the slide. Now in this case we don't have any issue in putting there just in case remember that you need to lift a little bit. Okay, when done Put your rubber band, you are done. Last but not least, we are going to do the same operation with the inside square. Again, we lift up or remove directly the lid here. We lift a little bit and then slide out. Now, this is again the surface that will be impressed, so we need to put it facing outside. In this case, in order to be sure that we put in the center, just put on one edge and then slowly you just move it till you feel that is in the center. Back. Dark slide. Rubber band. And your package is ready to be stored outside and bring with you or directly put in the camera. I want to show you how to put one of these 
inside this camera. And again, what I'm doing here is the same that uh, you can do in other uh, pack fill cameras. So you open it, you remove the rubber band and put it inside the slot. Remember to remove the dark slide, close it and shoot. When you have done, you open it back. Now your film is exposed, so you have to remember to put back the dark slide. Okay, it's covered. Put your rubber band and ready to move in your dark room or your changing bag to move with the uh, development of the film. So you can use also a 4x5 size holder, the one that you can find in the biggest camera. Né? And you simply open, even in uh, normal light, you're not worried about that. You put your holder, remember to remove the rubber band first try to place it as center as possible remove the first dark slide and then close it you see and you are ready to shoot your instax wide on a 4 5 4 by 5 camera as well because when you're going to remove the dark slide here, that will be the image that will be impressed. And as you can notice, it's exactly in the middle. So always remember the middle is where the film is going to, to be. Finish the shoot, close the dark slide, remove the holder because it's easy, of course, to manage it on, on a table or a flat surface. Open it, remember you have your internal dark slide that you have to put inside, you see it's covered, put your rubber band and you're done. When you will be back home or when uh, you just take your uh, uh, changing bag, you can put back inside the, the square in this case uh, case sorry for the, using the same word uh, and then develop with your camera